WoW Reddit top post. Let me look at the WoW Reddit real quick, okay? Um, okay. So, WoW Reddit. That face when Blizzard comes up with a good idea and don't remember that they did. Preach be fighting for us even more. Keep it up, Preach. For a few weeks, Battle for Azeroth Beta, the chest dropped more than one item. This is intended design and behavior of the chest is likely. Uh, the behavior of the chest is to award one weekly high-end item, just like it did in Legion. And then Preach says, okay. All right. Um, articles have been published for months on the subject on your official partner sites, and not once did you borrow the correct it until the day of becoming actionable. There's zero chance that you didn't know this was the expected system by the community. That's actually true. No, he's completely right. Like, yeah, they, they knew. They, they knew very clearly, and they were just... See, here's the problem. Well, let me let me watch this video, and then I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it, okay? What have you been watching? What do you mean, what have I been watching? Um, what do you mean? Like, there's nothing even weird here. Okay. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. So, one thing I want to make clear is Bellier's videos are much more well produced than mine. Like, his videos are actually good, whereas mine were just like literal, just like random gameplay with me sitting there without a script talking in the corner. Bellier does actual good videos. I did not. Battle for Azeroth has been really fascinating to me. The initial reaction, of course, was quite positive. BFA delivered a massive new world, with Kul'Tras particularly being one of my favorite places in the game. True. The, the zone design, the True. art, the music, it was all fantastic. True. Of course, though, World of Warcraft is an MMO, and that means that endgame is what really matters. Bottom left. Now, this is where Battle for Azeroth's reaction kind of forks off. Now, I've personally had a lukewarm experience, but seeing as how the game is very strange in how I play it because of work, I didn't really trust that. So instead, I've been listening to you for the last few weeks, and I've been thinking, I've been analyzing, and I think I know why Battle for Azeroth's endgame is feeling a little bit underwhelming. This video is the first of a two-part critique on the modern direction of World of Warcraft, so today is focusing two parts. on that means why I have more content for, for tomorrow. the way that it does for many players, and the follow-up video is going to focus on the deeper game design philosophy that are at the very core of this issue. Now, I need to begin by setting my intentions of this video. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm, you know, I'm benching my part in the fandom of the franchise and of Blizzard. I love what they make. Their games have changed my life entirely, and I still am actually having fun playing BFA with my friends. This video is not to be taken, you know, as me laying down a truth. It's merely my own interpretation based on my experience, I agree, combined Bingo. with attempting to leverage the broad view of the Warcraft player base that this channel affords me. So, let's begin. Now, at one point, I said that BFA was kind of Legion 2.0. Upon further reflection, I think that's incorrect. Battle for Azeroth is simultaneously Legion 0.5 and Legion 1.5. Let's unpack that. The successful systems of Legion, or at least those which Blizzard have viewed okay. as being successful, such as Mythic Plus, Raids, Reputations, and World Quests, well, they're still here, and True. in some ways, they have small improvements. Enough True. to be Mythic Plus version 2, World Quests version 2. No, they're barely different. These systems True. have been maintained into Battle for Azeroth, which means that even though the quests that we do are new, the dungeons that we do are, are new, the overall context and flow of the end game feels very familiar. What does that mean? Well, it means that it doesn't feel particularly exciting. Now that's fine, there is no real need to reinvent the wheel all the time. However, in combination with my next point, it kind of causes problems. So, some systems feel like Legion version 0.5, almost like a small prototype to what we grew used to in the last expansion, and this is where I think that most of the damage has been done. Azerite gear is smaller than artifacts in many ways. The traits, while they often are powerful in terms of the numbers, they're not that exciting. Well, exciting in comparison to what? Well, using a spec-specific legendary that heavily impacted gameplay, having okay. cool artifact ability or trait mechanic, True. having a set piece that you enjoy. Azerite Thanks, replaces Thanks all 20, of man. these sources of gameplay and excitement That's with true. a system that does feel quite small in comparison. Yes. We seem to have lost more than we gained, and now yes. that we look at the old year traits, we can't say that we need to wait until beta is over. It's over. 
we have really? what we have. So the high points of Azerite, basically the gameplay and the traits, they're not as high as those from the system which it replaces. Instead, the Azerite system seems to be far more concerned with meeting the criticisms of Legion, so they have a more fixed acquisition than legendaries. They don't have random traits, unlike, That's say, true. the Netherlight Crucible. They don't Titanforge. My primary point here is that Blizzard seem to have designed this system rather defensively, with seemingly their main aim being to take the perceived problems with the interactions of multiple Legion systems and then condense them into one easy to understand system for players. That's this, I would posit, has resulted true. in a system that feels a lot less exciting and impactful than what was there in Legion. True. Even though, of course, I am on the record as heavily disliking a lot of, say, the Legion legendary systems true. since um, Legion Alpha. So where does all this leave us? Well, we've got a bunch of systems that were carried forward into Battle for Azeroth. They weren't changed that much, and therefore they don't really feel new and thrilling and like they did in Legion. Then some systems that had problems but did provide some exciting gameplay high points, they were replaced with Azerite, which provides wow. upsides that are lesser and perhaps downsides that are maybe a little bit lesser. Now, when I was talking to Matt, who helps out um, with the channel and is a myth greater about this, he summed it up pretty well. He said, Everything seems exactly a few steps back in scope. Now, while that may not be, say, factually true, I think that it is in line with how playing Battle for Azeroth feels. Now, the deeper problem is that Azerite progression is fundamental to the reward loop of this expansion. You are supposed to be excited to do island expeditions and world quests because of Azerite gear. Now, Azerite so gear exciting. is not that exciting, so we run into problems that undermine the excitement of the game's core reward loop. Very now, exciting. Now, that is only covering Azerite as compared to the systems which it replaces. Things, unfortunately, do get worse. Um, having a 325 bit of Azerite gear with everything unlocked and then getting a 340 dupe, but only to have, say, the first trait unlockable, that feels like a downgrade, even if the traits do scale up with item level. Now, this is tremendously problematic. Hardly. First, it undermines your sense of progression on a long-term basis, where you feel like the game is always fighting with you to keep you grinding through ever-shifting and ever-increasing goalposts. Then, it undermines one of the core parts yep. of a role-playing game, the excitement of getting a new bit of loot. Getting a bit of Azerite gear is still kind of exciting, but that's undermined by knowing that it might not even be usable until you grind, uh, grind islands and world quests for another week. Then, Azerite is quite frustrating when you're playing world? with multiple specs. Quest? The amount of bag fiddling and management that you have to do, well, it just does not feel up to the level of polish that I would expect from a Blizzard product. I have focused a lot on Azerite here, um, but other aspects of the game have se received the same treatment. Classes do just feel a little bit less in scope. Professions are similar to Legion but with slightly less interesting crafts and less content. The war campaign is yeah. similar to the class hall campaigns, True. but it's smaller in scope, and it only covers two factions instead of one for every class. So True. when we compare Battle for Azeroth to Legion, it is a bit of a mixed bag. But you might be saying, what about the new features, war fronts and island expeditions? Well, they don't matter because they're not multiplicative in nature. What do I mean by that? Well. If a game feature is multiplicative, then it will have impacts that will be felt throughout the entire game. And uh, now an excellent example is, say, the enemy design of the original Doom. Uh, each one of them is very different, so dealing with any two of those enemies in any combination feels entirely different from a gameplay perspective. In Doom, the combat feels something along the lines of the number of enemy types squared, and then on top of that, of course, you've got to take in the level design. Now, when you're talking about game systems, That's what this game, essentially dude. is trying to get at is you can have a very small number of game systems that come together to create a massive number of outcomes. That's the strength of, say, sandbox MMOs, and it's why something Eve. like EVE Online has lasted for so long. Now, WoW is simply not like EVE. It is different in nature fundamentally, but I bring this up because the new systems of Battle for Azeroth are alternative side activities for you to do. Past being included in the core reward system, they don't really have an intrinsic reason to exist. And that is why Island Expeditions and Warfronts don't feel that inspiring. They are fun new additions, sure, but they don't really bring more than that. They don't represent a core change to the feel of playing World of Warcraft. They are That's just another thing to do that is a part of an existing carrot and stick system. Island Expeditions are a form of gameplay that only exists to fulfill the needs of artifact power acquisition, which itself only exists to serve the contrived Azerite progression system, which itself feels like a rather limp version of the Legion artifact system. Systems on systems, basically, boys. Basically, Battle for Azeroth could exist without either of those two new systems, and you basically would not notice. 
they are a small bolt on to an existing experience. That's, that's a really good point. An experience that really has lasted since Legion's launch of 2016. And well, by this stage, two years later, it feels rather contrived. So that is why I think many people have found Battle for Azeroth to be a bit lukewarm. While they might be enjoying playing it for the same reason that they enjoyed playing Legion, it maybe just feels a bit underwhelming. Now this video exists to talk about the immediate problem, but we do need to go a lot deeper than this. And that's why there's going to be a follow-up that is discussing the philosophical underpinnings of the game design as it is currently, We're gonna watch an over-directed experience, even though it may have it's a wealth now. of content, can feel that. extremely small, and how because of that, I genuinely do think that Blizzard often played to their weaknesses rather than their strengths. And I suppose one way that you could sum a lot of this stuff up is that Battle for Azeroth just feels like a big Argus, like a big patch that's continuing a bunch of systems, throwing a bunch of new content in, but it kind of still all feels the same. So that's it for this video. Um, yeah, it's probably one of the more controversial ones that I will release because, uh, well, you know, a new expansion has came out and, and I have a lot of very mixed things to say about it. Uh, so yeah, that's what's up there. Of course, I really want to know what you have to say about all of this, and especially like the core design direction of Modern World of Warcraft. So let me know down in the comments below. True. With that though, big thank you to you for watching this video. A big thank you to everyone over on Patreon for supporting the channel. And the Patreon support has been absolutely fantastic. It's just tremendously helped with us moving in to our new office, which has, uh, yeah, it's going to be really good for the future. And uh, if you want to check out something cool and new there, we have the master tier, which um, has now been updated this month to include two physical items instead of one and uh, you know for the, the same price and all that stuff so you can check that out thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time yeah his videos are really good uh so yeah make sure to support this guy bill yours awesome and so everybody's basically agreeing with him if you look at like his likes versus dislikes they're very high somebody said there's a thread about me oh boy i, I love reading those let's see let me turn it off and then i'll open it back up